It's a sad day for the court and for the country. Fifty years ago, Roe v. Wade was decided and has been the law of the land since then. It reaffirmed basic principles of equality, that women have the power to control their own destiny. Now, with Roe gone, let's be very clear. The health and life of women in this nation are now at risk, but it doesn't mean the fight's over. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jason Grenauer. Hundreds of people are protesting outside the Supreme Court right now after the court's conservative majority voted six to three to overturn Roe v. Wade. The decision removes federal abortion protections for women, which had been a constitutional precedent in the United States for nearly 50 years. A reaction has been pouring in all day from anti-abortion and abortion rights activists across the country. Let's start in Washington with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. It's a slap in the face to women about using their own judgment to make their own decisions about their reproductive freedom. Americans celebrate this historic victory because we know it will save the lives of millions of children 26 states are now poised to severely restrict or outlaw abortion. 13 have so-called trigger laws banning abortion upon the court's decision to strike it down. Denver 7's Megan Lopez has been gathering reaction from across Colorado all day. Megan, talk to us about the impact about this of this decision here. Well, Jason, the importance of this moment and this decision cannot be understated. For pro-choice act uh, advocates, this moment and this decision mean a, a big step backwards in terms of protecting women's rights. For uh, anti-abortion advocates, what this means is a big step forward for them in protecting the unborn. Now, the Supreme Court decision reaffirmed that it's back on the states to do what they want about abortion. Many states have trigger laws, as you mentioned, that if Roe were to fall, abortions would be outlawed in some fashion. Colorado, very much the opposite. Lawmakers took proactive steps this year to codify abortion access into Colorado law. We spoke with people on both sides about their take on today's ruling. I think this is the, the best day the best day to see a step towards more equal rights for every human being. If you don't have the right to live, you don't have any other right. If the federal government says that our individual states have the right to determine what's best for us and for our bodies, what else does the government have a right to say about? There is a ballot initiative that's making its way through the signature gathering process to try to limit abortions in Colorado. Numerous others in the past have failed. Pro-choice groups are also trying to codify abortion rights into the Constitution in 2024 so that it doesn't fall on the political whim of the state legislature. Now, there are a lot of legal questions in the wake of this Supreme Court decision about what something like this could mean for, say, same-sex marriage or birth control. One Supreme Court opinion that came out today said that this is strictly about abortion. Another that came out today said that it could, possibly should, have wider-reaching, um, really, effects and that the Supreme Court should revisit them. But Jason, the importance of this moment cannot be understated. Our Megan Lopez live for us tonight. And as Megan was talking about that in that 211 page majority opinion issued today, many are pointing to a specific sentence written written by Justice Clarence Thomas. In it, he implies that this decision calls for not only revisiting issues like contraception and same sex marriage, but overturning those precedents as well. Today's Supreme Court ruling now puts the power in the hands of each state when it comes to rules around abortion. Little less than half are expected to protect abortion rights. The others are poised to or could change access depending on how the upcoming midterm elections go. It's a decision that much of the country has been preparing for. Only a few countries have restricted abortion over the last few decades, according to the Center for Reproductive Rights. Meanwhile, during the same time, more than 50 nations have expanded access. More than a quarter of women of reproductive age worldwide live in areas with complete or severe abortion bans. Meanwhile, certain U.S. states have laws on standby that essentially ban abortion. 
these things that we call trigger laws. And generally they banned all forms of abortion, even if the woman's life is at stake. Laws that some believe could further health inequity. Black women already have a maternal mortality rate three times that of white women. Black women have disproportionately the greatest number, greatest percentage of abortions. But that is due to the economic oppression and frankly the, the poor economic circumstances that we exist in now, but that are 400 years in the making. What we're anticipating is an increase in those numbers of pregnancy-related deaths due to illegal abortions. Duke University found a ban on abortions could increase black maternal deaths by 33 percent compared to a 21 percent increase for the overall population. Having a patchwork of states that provide abortion services will also further limit access to women who can't afford to travel for reproductive health care. While this disproportionately impacts black and brown women, this is also an issue of just poor women in general. You know, this affects everybody. At city levels, both large and small resolutions are also in place for the abortion ruling. We want really virtually no enforcement of any alleged abortion crimes. Some shielding women from state laws, like in Austin, Texas, where police departments would treat abortion crimes as their lowest possible priority. But it's going to be really hard to control, you know, rogue city officials that, that you know, want to investigate this, these things on their own. And in state line towns like Ontario, Oregon, that borders Idaho, there's pushback on welcoming women that may travel for services. You know, that's what they do in Western Oregon. That's not we, what we in Eastern Oregon want to portray. It's just a different lifestyle. Threatening more divide within America. We will not stop. We will not stop helping people access abortions, whether it's here or if it's in another state. Now, the Supreme Court ruling will have a major impact on abortion procedures across the country. It will not only trigger those laws in several states to ban abortion, but it will have a ripple effect on states like Colorado as well, even despite our state's efforts to protect access. Joe St. George explains. This is the scene outside the Supreme Court in Washington. Both sides either cheering in celebration with this decision or yelling in frustration at the Supreme Court building. But to some degree, today's opinion was expected. That leaked opinion from a few weeks back is essentially what the court issued today. And now changes will happen across the country. I'm angry. I am extremely excited. The Supreme Court opinion may have come from Washington, but it will impact every Every state in the country. According to the nonprofit Guttmacher Institute, each one of these states is certain or likely to ban abortion. 26 states in total, with new restrictions coming in some places. Progressive cities like San Diego, Boulder, Colorado, Las Vegas, and Buffalo, New York are now bracing to become abortion safe havens. We're already seeing out of state patients coming from Texas. And that includes San Francisco. Gilda Gonzalez is with Planned Parenthood of Northern California. We chatted with her ahead of today's ruling. It's estimated that at the expected restrictions are passed, 30% of the country's abortion clinics will soon be in California. Ideas have already been discussed here to not just privately fundraise to subsidize a woman's travel from another state, but state taxpayer dollars from Californians may soon be allocated for people living elsewhere to come to California. There are a lot of ideas that are being floated. I want them to know that they're not alone. One concern in progressive states, including places like Colorado, is whether out-of-state patients will soon fill appointments and make it more difficult for women from their state to schedule a procedure. Gilda tells me balancing in-state appointments with out-of-state ones may be needed. Everybody needs to be aware of what is happening. But one thing we learned here. We really believe that the abortion industry is predatory. Is the anti-abortion movement is getting ready for what's next too. Kristen Turner is with Pro-Life San Francisco. She says those opposed to abortion like her will be increasing their advocacy in progressive cities with the goal of restricting abortions, not just in conservative states, but in liberal states eventually too. She wants Congress to pass a nationwide ban. All the work we do is going to have to be ramped up 110%. So you really think abortions could be illegal in San Francisco one day? Yep. Unless you are dreaming big, unless you are fighting for those rights that you know people think are impossible, it's never gonna get done. And that's what we're here to do because 50 years ago, nobody thought Roe v. Wade was gonna be overturned. I'm Joe St. George reporting. Now, you can find much more depth on today's decision by the Supreme Court and Colorado's protections in place for women seeking abortions. That's up right now on the DenverChannel.com. 
Well, still to come, it's the final countdown to the Stanley Cup final. The Avs and their fans are ready. We head out to Ball Arena and take a look for at what to expect for Game 5 of the Stanley Cup final.